Hello, this is Evan Rogerson, and I'm Motor Gang, and today I'm going to be covering and breaking down bearings, um, when you should use them, and how they work, and which ones are going to be better in circum certain circumstances. And I'm only going to be covering low strength bearings today for low strength shafts. Um, I'm not going to be covering high strength shafts, I'll probably do that in a separate video. So I'm also not going to include like the ball bearings and stuff, which you can adapt to use on a low strength shaft, although I wouldn't typically recommend that due to the additional weight. And as you'll see here, you can get plenty of low friction using these regular bearings. So in order to show you how I'm generating the numbers from the friction, I will be using the default devices info screen on the brain. So if you just open up your brain, click on devices, and you can click on a motor, and you can just move these buttons up and down to give it power and take away power. So that's kind of the basis for this video. Uh, make sure to comment to boost the YouTube algorithm and leave a like as well. So without further ado, let's get into it. So usually in my videos for my sources, I just say like, trust me, bro. But um, today I have the brain set up and I'll be actually having a motor and kind of showing off some of the stuff. So right now this shaft is not in the motor. Um, you can see here. And right now the motor is off. Um, and now let me go ahead and turn it on to full power. All right, so as you can see here, um, and you can probably hear, um, the motor is spinning, and it's spinning at maximum speed, and it's pulling about 0 to 0 0.1 watts. And basically, that means that in order to spin at 200 RPM, it needs 0.1 watts of power. So the less amount of power that you need in order to get the motor to spin, the lower the friction. So let's go ahead and get the shaft in here with absolutely no bearings at all, and we'll see how many watts that pulls. So, as you can see here, um, the shaft is spinning, it's in the motor, and we are running about 0.3 watts of friction. So it's almost triple the amount of friction that we were running earlier, simply by not having any bearings on the shaft. So now, to kind of showcase, I'm, we're going to start adding some bearings to kind of show you how you can reduce your friction, and the pros and cons of each of these bearings. So the first bearing I'll be covering is my personal favorite, and these are the version 2 um, I believe they're called like um, nut retainers with bearing on the official VEX website. And there's a couple things to like about these. One, they're the lightest or really close to the lightest. I'll have the weight of this entire system up on the screen because I did measure those yesterday. So it uses a nylon nut on the inside and a nylon screw. And then you only need one screw because it has like this little peg that kind of goes into the hole at the back to essentially act as your other screw. So it's fairly light. Also, if you don't have nylon equipment, you can use an orange size screw, which is 0.375 inches and a nylock nut. Um, additionally, you could just use those if you're worried about the security as well, but I've never had issues with the nylon stuff coming loose because um, the nut is held in place. But again, if you're really worried, you could upgrade that for a little bit more extra weight. Now, Part of the reason that I quite like these is because the additional square post makes it very easy to line up the system to get lower friction. So let's go ahead and get this shaft in and I'll show you what this friction runs. So as you can see, it's all spinning. We have the bearing installed and it's running about 0.2 watts on average, which is still more than just running the motor without any shaft attached. But of course, adding a shaft is gonna increase your friction and this is less friction than running it by about 0.1 watts just on the bare metal. Now let's go ahead and swap this out for one of the other bearing types. All right, so next up, next up installed is just the regular bearing flat, and that is secured with nylock nuts on the end and nylon screws on the side. Now this system is going to be slightly heavier just because you're having to use nylock nuts. I don't personally use the aluminum, I mean the nylon ones here, just because um, they're not being secured by a nut retainer. And additionally, you're going to need two screws here. They do kind of have some pegs. Um, they're just not as big as the one on the other one. Let me try and get the key. There you go. You can kind of see the little nubs in the corner. Um, so those can kind of help with alignment, but I would say it's a little bit trickier to get aligned, um, but you're still going to have comparable friction. So as you can see, shaft is spinning, and we are getting about 0.2 watts again, which is the same as our other bearing, um, which is still going to be less friction than if you're running without a bearing and more friction than if you didn't have anything in the motor at all. And then we would get the same results if we used the version two bearings. Um, but personally, I would recommend using these. I mean, not the version two bearings, the low profile bearings. I would highly recommend using these if you have them. Um, one of the advantages of these bearings over the other ones 
So you can see these two bearings side by side. They're gonna give you the same results on frictions as friction, but you can see that the low profile one is quite smaller. I believe it's also 0.2 grams lighter. So I would recommend using them in all circumstances if you have them. But then the real reason that you would wanna purchase these is if you're using these end holes on the C-channel. You can see this one meshes in there and there is a slight gap in between the edge of the C-channel and on the um, bearing. But this one, um, it doesn't hit. There's no gap in there. Um, it kind of looks like it does there on the camera. Let me try and focus in. Yeah, but that's actually bending up. Um, let me try and get that from that angle. So it's not actually level with the C-channel base. Um, so you would either have to file it down or because it's slightly at an angle, which again is quite hard to show off on the camera, um, you're gonna have increased friction. So I'd recommend low profile bearings. And then another technique um, that you can do is to get these to essentially the same weight. It'll still be, I believe, 0.1 grams heavier um, than the original method of the version two bearings with nylon is to use zip ties instead of screws in order to secure your bearings, which I will show off real quick. So as you can see again, we're getting about 0.2 watts, um, maybe spiking up a little bit higher. I find with the zip tie bearings, it's a little bit harder to get everything lined up properly just because it's harder to get the everything lined up and secured. Um, but this is definitely a valid method and it's gonna be quite light. I know some teams really like this because you don't have to worry about your screws coming loose. But personally, I find the ease of screws, reusability of them. And I don't know, I think there's just something a little bit scuffed about using zip ties as your bearings, but it's perfectly viable and a respectable method. So now I'll kind of go into something a lot of teams don't well, a lot of teams do, but they shouldn't do, of putting bearings on their motor. So now you can see the, the motor is pulling about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 watts, which is about comparable from if we never even had that bearing in the first place. And all that I did was add a bearing to that motor. Um, which I know a lot of teachers will just say, hey, every time you have a shaft contacting a point of metal, you should put a bearing, which as a rule of thumb is generally pretty good because like you saw earlier in the video, um, adding a bearing here reduces friction. But the reason that this adds friction is because you only want your shafts to have two points of contact. And that adds a third point of contact. You can see right in there, or maybe you can't, the lighting's kind of awkward, but the shaft is touching the bearing. Um, every time you have something spinning up against something static, that's going to add friction to the system. So by having three points of contact, one inside the motor, one on this bearing, and one out here, um, three points of contact, you have random three points and you draw a line between them, you're not always going to be able to draw a line covering all the points. Um, that's because of geometry. You'd have to have everything perfectly lined up. And just because of build tolerances in the VEX system, that's almost impossible to do. When you remove the bearing from the motor, the shaft doesn't actually touch any part of that inside C channel. As you can see, as I'm rotating that around, there's a very small gap in between everything, but assuming your motor clearance is correct, the shaft shouldn't actually touch the inside hole of the C-channel. So since the rotating object isn't actually touching anything stationary, you're going to get lower friction than if you add a bearing there, because then you'll have the rotary shaft touching the inside of the bearing. And even though bearings have low friction, it's still not zero, whereas the no touching is zero friction. Now this setup you can see has three points of contact. I removed the bearing from on the, inside that motor, but you have one point of contact inside the motor, one point of contact on this bearing, and one point of contact at this bearing. And from a glance, it looks like it all lines up nicely, and you can draw one line going through all three points. But as you can see, this actually adds a lot of friction because um, you only want two points of contact. So let me get the brain up and I'll show you how much friction it actually runs, but feel free to take a guess. As you can see, this is spinning, and simply by adding this extra C-channel in the middle, we're now running at 1.5-ish watts of friction, roughly 10 times the original amount we were getting. So this will dramatically increase the amount of friction you have by just having multiple points of contact along one shaft. Um, so that's definitely, I would say, the biggest thing to take away is two points of contact only, one inside the motor, one on the bearing. Now, there is one case in which you'd want to put a bearing on the motor, and that is when you are running something cantilever. Cantilever is when your object is 
your axle isn't supported on one side. It's only supported on one side. Now, please don't do cantilever, especially not on your drive bases. Some of you do this, and it pains me every time I see this, because as you're about to see, it has really bad friction, um, and it just support in general. So please don't run cantilever, especially on your drive bases. There are very, very rare occasions where cantilever is fine for other stuff, but you shouldn't. The average 9 Motor Gang channel viewer should not be messing with that sort of thing. So let's, let me just get this tuned up all the way and you'll see how bad the friction is on this. So So yeah, please, please don't run Canty Drive. Now, on the very, very rare circumstances that it is optimal to run cantilever, which those are very rare and they are never on your drive base, um, you do want to have a bearing on there because now you have one, two points of contact. And as you'll see, once I get this friction up, it's not going to be as bad as last time. So as you can see, that's running with the bearing installed, um, significantly less wobble as well. And it's running like 1.2 watts of friction, which is lower than it had without the bearing. Again, this isn't optimal um, by any means, but if you are going to run cantilever, make sure you install the bearing. Now the last bearing that I didn't really cover so far in this video is your pillow bearings. Um, so this is typically where your shaft would run through, and then you would use two screws to secure it down, usually on top of a C-channel like that. And it does have a little nub on the bottom, um, less pronounced than the version 2 bearings, um, but that can kind of help with alignment. Overall, this bearing isn't great. If you look at the cab model, you'll actually notice that, I mean, those faces, they look like they're perpendicular to the ground, but they're actually angled in slightly. Um, I think it's by about two degrees, so you get four degrees off total whenever you're using these. So I wouldn't recommend using these unless you have to, but they do have some nice spacing mounts uh, if you really need that sort of interesting spacing. And I think that wraps it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and feel free to leave comments down below for future video ideas, as I'm always looking for more educational type things to be able to create. See you in the next one.